Hello, in this video, I'll show you how to do skin retouching in Photoshop from the start to the very end. And this is going to be a more detailed kind of video that is going to teach you how you can easily learn and understand how to do skin retouching from the start to the very end. You can say before and after, before and after. So in this video, I'll teach you the best way to do your skin retouching when it comes to Photoshop using a concept known as frequency separation. Remember, frequency separation is a technique that is going to divide this very image into two layers. That is the color layer and also the texture layer. So just come the background image right here for the image that you want to edit and simply create two copies from the background layer by pressing Ctrl J or you can use Command J on the keyboard or you can as well drop and drop or the new layer icon to create a copy from the background image. So I'm just going to do this twice to create those two layers. Once I'm done doing this, simply rename this to double click, click to rename that to color. And I'm just going to double click on the topmost layer and I'll basically name that to texture. Once I'm done renaming these two layers to colors and texture, I'm just going to come to the color layer, select it, and turn off the texture layer. The reason for turning off the texture layer is because I only want to affect the colors for this first step. So I'll simply come right here to where you see filter, come to blur, and come to Gaussian blur. So this is the most important step when it comes to editing using frequency separation, and you have to determine the amount of skin textures that you want to blur away from the colors. So just click on an area that you feel has more skin details or that area that has more skin textures in the image that you want to edit and simply click on the radius slider and start moving that up or move that forward. But you have to st stop at that point whereby you are just starting to lose out on the skin textures in that given area. So at about 5, that is when I'm just starting to lose out on the skin textures in this very image. So depending on the image that you want to work on, you have to move this radius and stop at that point whereby you are just starting to lose out on the skin details. So just come and click OK. Then you're going to come to the texture layer and turn it on. After turning on the texture layer, we are basically going to come to image, come to apply image, and it's going to open up this apply image window whereby the source is going to be the name of the photo that you're trying to edit. So under layer, select the color layer, then Channel measure the channel is set to RGB. The blending is set to add because we are editing a 16 bit image. So, in case you're editing an 8 bit image, I'll show you the settings later on. So, for a 16 bit image, the blending is going to be set to add. Opacity is 100%. Preserve transparency and mask are not checked. Measure the scale is 2 and offset 0. And simply turn on the invert option. And you'll see the textures on this square like kind of layer. So in case you're editing an 8-bit image, these are settings that you have to use. So in case you have 8 here, it means your image is going to be 8-bit. So for an 8-bit photo, simply after selecting the color layer, channel RGB, make sure invert is not turned on. And under blending, make sure it is set to subtract. The scale is 2, offset 128. Make sure the opacity is 100%. Preserve transparency and mask are not checked. And you'll basically have the textures on this gray kind of layer. So for our case, it is a 16-bit image, so we have to revert this to 16-bit settings. So I'm just going to change the blending mode to add. Scale is to offset 0 and turn on the invert option and click OK. After doing this, simply come to the blend mode and change it from normal and change it all the way down to linear light. Then select both layers by holding down Ctrl or Command and select both layers. Then drag and place the two layers into a group. So you can rename the group to frequency separation. So after doing this, open up the frequency separation group by clicking on the drop down arrow to open up the group. So just come to the color layer, make sure it is selected. So for this step, we just want to fine tune the colors. So in order to fine tune the colors in this very image, we are going to first of all use the lasso tool technique to fine tune the colors and later on, blend the skin tones using the mixer brush tool so just come and get the lasso tool this is the lasso tool and for your settings make sure new selection mode is activated the first option right here under feathering make sure it is set to 20 pixels and alias is selected and once you're done doing that the next step is going to be making a selection the reason for choosing a feathering of 20 pixels is because we want the edges of the selection to be smooth and we don't want it to leave those annoying lines on the edges of the selection. So with the lasso tool selected and the color layer selected, with both the texture and the color layers visible, you're just going to zoom in slightly 
and simply make a selection. So simply click and hold down and you draw to make a selection. Keep eye from the edges of the image or even the eyebrows and the hair. So make sure you only select on the skin. Once you're done selecting on the skin area, make sure the shape is following the shape or a given area of the model's face. Don't make a very big shape. So once you're done making that selection, simply come to filter, come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. And it's going to open up this Gaussian blur window that is going to be containing the initial radius that we use for our frequency fashion, which is five. So after doing this, simply you can either click on the radius slider and move this forward and stop at that point whereby the colors are blending quite well. So at about 15 or 16, that is when the colors are blending quite well and the textures are still left intact. But you can as well multiply the radius that you use for your frequency separation by 3 and type in that value. So initially we had a radius of 5, so multiply the radius you use for your frequency separation by 3. So 5 by 3 is 15. So I'll basically delete 5 and type in 15 and click OK. So deselect the active selection, click away from the selection, and that is going to automatically deselect the active selection. So I'll do this for the rest of the areas that have or contain skin. So you can see the shapes are also following the where the model's face is shaped. So just come back to filter, come to blur and come to Gaussian blur and click OK. So in case the effect is too much for your liking, you can right click on the selection and you come to fade Gaussian blur and you can reduce on the effect in a given area. So I'm just going to leave everything to 100%. So I'll do it for the rest of the areas that have or contain skin color or skin tones. Just come to filter blur, come to Gaussian blur, click OK and come and make a new selection. So as soon as I start making a new selection, it is going to automatically deselect the previous selection. So I'm just going to make the selection once again, come to filter, come to blur, come to Gaussian blur and click OK like that. So this is basically what I have to do for the rest of the areas that have or contain skin tones around the face. So for this technique, we are only going to be applying it all over the face of the subject and not the body so just do this for the rest for the rest of the face so when it comes to the nose you can simply come and make a selection on the dark area of the nose just like that don't select the whole nose come to filter come to blur and come to gaussian blur click ok and just do the same for this other side of the nose don't select the whole nose because when you select the whole nose it is going to make the nose look big and flat so once you're done applying this to the face, you can see it still isn't perfect enough. You can see before and after. So now to make the effect look better in this case, we are just going to incorporate a second technique. You can see that we have this kind of blotchiness and the skin tones are not blending quite well. You can see before, after. So in order to get a better image in this case, we are simply going to come and turn off the texture layer or turn off the high frequency layer and simply come to the brushes and get the mixer brush tool. In case you can't locate the mixer brush tool under the brushes, you can locate the mixer brush tool below here. So I've selected the mixer brush tool and for whichever tool you select in Photoshop, the settings are always going to be above here. So after selecting the mixer brush tool, you're going to come and make sure the hardness set to zero, soft round brush is selected and make sure clean brush is selected. Then make sure the second option that is clean brush after each stroke is selected we are going to be using the weight of nine percent the load of 75 percent the mix is 90 percent the flow is a hundred percent and make sure sample alias is not turned on or is not checked once you're done doing that remember we have selected the color layer and we have turned off the texture layer so for the mixer brush tool we just want to blend these uneven skin colors existing within the model skin so how are we going to blend them? After setting up the Mr. Brush tool, we are just going to come and slightly increase on the size of the Mr. Brush tool by using the open and close square bracket keys on the keyboard to increase or reduce on the size of the Mr. Brush tool accordingly. And in case the Mr. Brush tool is showing a plus icon, make sure that you deactivate the caps lock key on the keyboard. So how to blend? We simply have to click and move the mixer brush tool to blend the colors in a given area like that. And you can see it is going to blend those colors accordingly like that. So make sure the color layer is selected for this step. Continue doing this for the rest of 
the skin to blend the uneven colors. So blend a given area, and after blending a given area, where these colors are transitioning from one color to another, you click once again and hold down and you blend. So every time you're done blending a given color, release the or stop clicking and click once again on a new color to blend that given color. So you can see by using a Mesa brush tool, we are trying to blend the mid-tones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone. Just like that. So mix the bright colors alone, the dark colors alone, and the medium colors alone in the image to blend them. So you can see for the forehead area, you can see how we have lost out on that kind of blotchiness on the skin color or on the skin tone. So you can see what we have. And now the colors on the forehead area are blending quite well. So we have to do this for the rest of the image. So you can see for the cheek area, we have to click and blend like that and follow the direction of the cheek area like that. So this area is moving this kind of direction. I'll blend this dark area alone like that and blend this bright area just below her eye alone like that. So you have to do this for the rest of the areas that have or contain skin color or skin tones. In the image so you can see what we have right now so I'll blend the highlight alone and by just doing this you can see every area is blending quite well regarding this very image so the reason that's why we turned off the texture is because we want to fine-tune the colors without having any kind of distractions from the textures so and the other thing make sure you don't zoom all the way in make sure you retouch at a distance because retouching at a distance is going to enable you see or identify the uneven skin color transitions in the image so that you can blend them well or better when you're trying to use the mixer brush tool. So you can see I'm playing around with different sizes of the mixer brush tool by using the open and close square bracket keys on the keyboard to increase or reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool accordingly or according to the size of the area that I want to blend or work on. So you can see when you come and turn on the texture, you can see the before and after, before, after. We have blended the tones without having to lose out on the initial skin texture. So I'm just going to turn this off once again and continue blending and working on the skin tones of the subject. So I'm just going to come to the lower part of the body and continue working. So blend like that. So continue doing this for the rest of the areas that have or contain skin tones and make sure you don't leave out any area that has or contains skin on the subject. So I'm just going to do this quickly. So for the fingers, just get a very small brush and try to blend all those unevenness within the tones on the fingers. So right now we are almost done using the Mr. Brush tool and I would like to show you the results right now. But remember, frequency separation deals with perfecting the textures and as well as the colors so that we can end up with a beautifully or nicely retouched image. So this is what we have right now. So what I'll do, I'll just come and turn on the texture layer and show you the overall before and after for the blending process. So you can say before, after, before, after, but this is not all for the skin retouching. So for the next step, we just want to fine tune our textures. So by fine tuning textures, we want to remove the blemishes or unwanted textures regarding pimples, blemishes, acne, and any other kind of unwanted textures on the skin. So we are going to come and select the layer that is containing the textures, which is the texture layer. And after selecting the texture layer, we are going to come and select our clone stamp tool. So select the clone stamp tool. And for settings, make sure the hardness is set to zero. Soft one brush is selected. The mode is set to normal, opacity at 100%, the flow is 100%, align this checked, and the sample is set to current layer because we want to remove blemishes that are part of the currently selected layer, which is the texture layer in our frequency separation group. So after doing that, we're just going to zoom in the image. So in order to zoom in, we're going to be using Ctrl plus on the keyboard, or you can use Command plus on the keyboard. So zoom all the way in because you want to remove the pimples and blemishes that you can't easily see when you're trying to retouch at a distance. So, for example, to remove this pimple from the nose, we make sure that the size of the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the pimple or the blemish that we want to remove. So, you can do that by using the open and 
close square bracket keys on the keyboard and to remove a pimple we make sure that the size is slightly bigger than the pimple or the blemish that we want to remove so how the clone stamp tool works we basically copy clean skin from an area near the pimple and we paste the clean skin over the pimple to cover it with clean skin and in that way the pimple is going to be eliminated from the model skin so hold down the option key on the keyboard for those using windows is the alternate key on the keyboard so option and click option click on a clean area near the pimple release the option key on the keyboard and simply click over the pimple to get rid of it so option click on a clean area near the pimple and release the option key on the keyboard and simply click once again over the pimple to cover the pimple end to remove the pimple from a given area so you have to do that for every single pimple around the model skin to eliminate it or remove it and in that way all the pimples are going to be removed from the subjective skin so keep on sampling so one finger should be on the option key on the keyboard and the other should be clicking so option and click like that so you have to do that for the rest of the pimples and blemishes from the model skin so i'm just going to zoom out to see where the pimples are and zoom in once again Control plus to zoom in command plus to zoom in so I'll do this for the rest of the pimples all over the model skin to eliminate them from the subjective skin. So I hope you can see what we have right now. And now the pimples are now get getting done with. So I'm just going to remove all these unwanted pimples and blemishes. So take your time as you're trying to remove or clear away these pimples from the model skin because you can't only perfect the tones without perfecting the textures in the image. So, so for example, to remove this kind of line, I'm just going to sample from nearby option and simply draw around that hairline to try to eliminate it or to fade it in. So I'm just, I'm just going to scroll down and see or identify where I haven't worked on regarding this very image. So. Take your time as you are trying to remove or clear away all these pimples and blemishes from uh, the subjective skin. So I hope you can see what we have right now. Command minus to zoom out and zoom in once again. Control plus to zoom in. And to move around simply hold down the space bar key on the keyboard and you can click to move to a different area after zooming in. To pan around the image as you're trying to remove all these unwanted pimples and blemishes so command minus or you can use control or command zero to resize or zoom out you can see what we have right now and this is the image before after before after so this is how you can simply understand how to do skin retouching for your photos and comes photoshop and finally to save a very sharp image simply come to file come to export and come to export as and it's going to bring up this export as window and make sure the format is set to jpeg quality set the maximum which is seven for this case under resample make sure the sample is set to by cubic sharper and make sure under color space since you want a sharp image that won't change in color when you post it or when you print it out make sure the color space is set to convert srgb and embed color profile have been checked and simply click on export in order to save the image and you can locate where you want to save the edited image you can rename it whatever you want and click on save so this is how you can learn skin retouching as a beginner from the start to the very end i hope you have learned a thing or two from this video ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in more videos on this channel don't forget to keep practicing and as well keep creating